What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.5 beta 1 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, Apple also released the first beta for iPadOS 18.5, macOS Sequoia 15.5, watchOS 11.5, tvOS and HomePodOS 18.5, and visionOS 2.5. But of course in this video we're talking all about iOS 18.5 beta 1 and everything that's included in this first update. So first off, you can see the size came in just under eight gigabytes. So it is a very large size, of course, because we are going from a beta to a final release. So it is always going to be a large size, 7.65 gigs on my 16 Pro Max. Let's go ahead and check out the new build. We head into our settings, general about 18.5. The new build number is 22F5042G. So we do have a G at the end of the build number, which indicates, of course, that we do have quite a few betas to go before the final release, as expected from a very first beta. Now, we do also have an update to the modem firmware down at the bottom. That is now 1.54.01 on the iPhone 16 series. And you can see that the modem firmware is actually a little bit behind the final version of iOS 18.4. It was 1.54.03 versus 1.54.01 on this first beta. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.5 beta 1? And I do just want to quickly reiterate what I've been saying for the past month or so. iOS 18.5 is not expected to be a major update. Typically, the the 0.5 updates from Apple are relatively minor updates. Yes, we're going to have new features and changes, but it's not going to be nearly as large of an update with as many features as we see in the 0.4 and the 0.2 updates. So just keep that in mind. Don't expect anything groundbreaking here with this 0.5 update. Now, with that being said, we do have a couple of changes. So if we head into our mail application, we do have some changes in mail. So you can see we actually have what looks like a bug here right off the bat. Okay, so my messages didn't even appear in mail when I first opened it. So that might be a bug that you encounter here in this first beta, which is always expected with a first beta. But anyways, the new change here in the mail application is if you tap on the three dots up here, we have a new option now for show contact photos. So now if you turn that off, you can see it just shows you a really streamlined look at your mail messages and you do not see the contact photos. But if you turn that on, you can see it will populate it with those photos. And you know, still even now on 18.5, we still don't have a lot of these filled out for the actual company. So some of them like Apple and Amazon, it will show their actual company logo there. But you can see even for Morning Brew, it doesn't actually show their logo. So it might be, you know, for some people, it might be kind of pointless to see those contact photos. So now you have the option to turn that off straight from the mail application because you could always do this from the settings in mail. So if you go to mail, you can see that we have show contact photos right there, but there was never an option to do so from the actual mail app itself. So it's a lot more convenient and it's also not kind of, you know, hidden. Some people don't even go into the settings. So you can now do it straight from here. Okay, so I'm going to mention this next change because I did notice it and I wrote it down, but it's not showing now. So I still want to mention it just in case it appears later or in case you're seeing it yourself. So if you go into the control center and you add a new toggle and you go down to the home section, you might see a big I saw actually, I should say I saw a big option, a third option for home with a bigger, you know, layout. So kind of like the home screen one. So if we go back here and then go to our home screen edit, let's add widgets and we're going to go to home and it was this right here. It was this accessories widget. That is what showed up as a control center toggle for me in the control center menu. But now, like I said, for some reason, it's not showing up after I rebooted my iPhone. So that might've been a bug or what I'm seeing now might be a bug where it's just gone again. So you guys let me know in a comment down below if you're seeing a third option for home. Also in iOS 18.5 beta one, if you head into your settings and go to general and then into Apple care and warranty, there is a change right here where you have a heading above now. So it shows an individual device and it's kind of a, a new style for this menu. But as you can see for mine, I just keep getting this error that says something went wrong and it's unable to process the request. It does not show me anything in my Apple care and warranty section. I've tried doing this on and off Wi-Fi. I've tried rebooting my device, force quitting settings. I've tried everything you can try. And for some reason I am not getting anywhere. It still gives me this error. So you guys might encounter this as well. Let me know in the comments, but 
but there is a change to the UI, the layout here in this section. There's also a new menu in here as well, as somebody pointed out in the Apple Den Discord server. And of course, with iOS 18.5 beta 1, we have the return of the back tap banner, just as I predicted when it was removed from iOS 18.4. So now if we double tap on the back to invoke back tap, you can see that the banner appears at the top. Now, unfortunately, it still has that same ugly design that myself and a lot of people are just not a big fan of, but you can see that does show up right there. Now, fortunately, we do have the option to disable that. So you can see it pops up. It's actually a little bit more fluid now in 18.5 as well compared to 18.4 when it was first introduced. But if you go into your settings and then go to accessibility, and we're going to go down to touch all the way to the bottom to back tap. And right here, you can see you have the option, a toggle to either show banner or not show banner. So if I turn that off and invoke back tap, of course it does not show up, but it will if I enable that. But that is not the only thing that's made a return in iOS 18.5, because we also have a return of something else that was included in iOS 18.4 and the betas, but it was removed in the final versions, the RCs, and of course the final release did not have this change, but it's here in 18.5. And that is if you go into your photos and go down to recently deleted and you put in your face ID or your passcode down here at the bottom, we have that new UI where we have an option to recover all with one tap. And we also have this over here to filter and view options. And we also have that little trash can over there to the right. And of course you can recover all with that tap. And if you tap on the trash can that will delete everything and recently deleted permanently from all devices. Now, unfortunately with iOS 18.5 beta one, we still do not have a fix for the individual cellular toggle here in the control center. It still does not accurately depict our signal strength in real time. So you can see it shows that we have four bars, but in reality, we only have two bars. And you can see down here with the connectivity platter, it does signify, you know, that we have two bars. It does update in real time, but for some reason, the individual toggle still does not. So that's either a bug and this will eventually show, you know, the real time signal strength, or it's just not a possibility for the individual toggle yet and it's only a possibility in the main connectivity platter so we'll have to wait and see on that now if we take a look at the release notes for iOS 18.5 beta 1 you can see that thankfully we only have a few resolved issues so you can see we have one for the Apple Vision Pro application that's the new app that was included with 18.4 so it fixes a bug where if you are on iOS 18.4 beta 1 the Apple Vision Pro app would launch with a black screen if downloaded from the App Store and you had to upgrade to 15 point one beta one you can see apple has a little typo there it's supposed to be ios 18.5 beta one but it says ios 15.1 beta one and newer and the app will launch as expected and then we have the store kit resolved issue and the writing tools resolved issue now as far as the performance goes i did run a geekbench 6 test shortly after updating and we scored a 3457 on the single core 8545 on the multi-core so you can see how that compares to the final build of ios 18.4 and some of the other versions before that. So not a terrible score, not a great score either. It's kind of what you'd expect from a first beta of 18.5. But overall, I've not really had any type of issues or hiccups with iOS 18.5 beta one, just actually using the device. So I would not expect anything crazy in terms of bugs since we are on a 0.5 release. But of course, I will let you guys know in my Apple Weekly episode if there's anything kind of major going on with this first beta. But right now, I don't really see there being anything too major. Major. The only concern I have, the only worry I have in terms of performance is that we did have some major issues with the first RC of iOS 18.4. So I'm hoping that those reboot issues where my phone would just randomly reboot do not come back with 18.5 beta one. So we'll have to wait and see on that. It's too early to tell just yet, unfortunately. Now, as far as the battery life goes, you guys will have to let me know what I started this video with, but it does seem like it went down a little bit faster than it did on 18.4, the final few betas, and of course the final release. So we might have a small drop here in battery life compared to 18.4. But again, that's kind of expected for a first beta. So just keep that in mind if you are going to switch over to the first beta on a device that you use daily, which is not recommended. But if you do, just know that your battery life will most likely take a hit. Now, as far as what to expect next from Apple, next up is going to be iOS 18.5 beta 2. And we're most likely going to be on a two week release cycle for the first beta and then after that we should switch over to a weekly after we get beta 2. so i would expect to see ios 18.5 beta 2 on the week of april 14th 
So either the 14th or the 15th is likely, but we should see it on that week. And then of course we will have a weekly release schedule, most likely until the final release at some point in May, most likely the you know first or second full week of May seems likely for 18.5. And then after that, we will get 18.6 betas. And of course, iOS 19 beta one on June 9th. And I would also expect to see an iOS 18.4.1 in the meantime between iOS 18.4 and 18.5, the final releases. So if you are on a public release, if you're not doing the betas, the next you know public release that we're going to get is most likely going to be 18.4.1 to patch up some bugs and add some more security patches if needed. But anyways, guys, that's iOS 18.5 at beta one, a relatively minor update, just as expected. Pretty much all of the 0.5 updates are this way. We should be seeing a new wallpaper in the RC. Apple typically releases the pride wallpapers in the 0.5 updates when the RC gets released because they do correspond with, you know, some products that Apple pushes out as well, like watch bands and things like that. So we are going to see some new wallpapers most likely in the RC, and we can expect to see maybe a few other minor changes throughout these beta stages. And of course, keep it locked to the channel so you don't miss out on all of the changes in this update. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below with your thoughts, and I will see you guys very soon.